Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Wusho dancer Gaming and Little Mantai are here to dazzle and set enemies ablaze with his plunging attack focus playstyle. You might be here after pulling him on Shenyun's banner or after getting him from the free 4 star selector, so to help you maximize his kit, this video will cover his talents, constellations, best artifact and weapon builds, and team comps. Let's get started. I'll start my warm up routine. Gaming's normal charged and plunging claymore attacks are inherently physical damage, so his innate elemental damage comes more from his skill and burst. However, these can be given an elemental infusion, particularly with C6 Bennett, which we'll cover later on. Moving on, casting Gaming's skill makes him pounce towards an enemy, and if you hit one, he steps on them to leap higher, which allows him to do a pyro plunging attack right after. Upon landing, he will consume 15% of his max HP, and with his Ascension 1 passive, he also rapidly regains a total of 6% HP over 4 ticks. Thanks to the self HP draining and healing mechanics, he can innately trigger equipment or ability effects that rely on HP manipulation. With the Ascension 4 passive unlocked, Gaming gets a 20% incoming healing bonus if he's below half HP, but if he has half or more HP, his skills plunging attack gets a 20% damage bonus. To maximize his damage, you want to keep him at high HP consistently. His skills plunge also has no ICD, which basically means it can apply pyro and trigger an elemental reaction with each plunge. This will be very important for his reaction-based teams. His skill will also repeatedly generate pyro particles, which he'll need to battery himself. Moving on, casting Gaming's burst first heals 30% of his HP and briefly applies pyro to himself, which can mainly help cleanse unwanted elemental auras. He also summons Mantai for 12 seconds, which has a very important purpose. Mantai initially deals huge AoE pyro damage, then goes back to Gaming, and upon its return, Gaming resets his skill cooldown. After Gaming either pounces or successfully does his skills plunging attack again with more than 50% HP, Mantai gets resummoned to reset his skill cooldown again. By repeating this mechanic, he can plunge repeatedly until his burst state ends. That's why it's also important to keep him at high enough HP. All in all, it's a simple gameplay loop which mainly focuses on having his burst active while spamming his skill. In between his skill cooldowns, he can use his claymore attacks while waiting for the skill reset and to drive his teammates abilities like Saint Cho or Yelan's bursts. Even with constellations, his gameplay will be essentially similar. For his utility passive, he gives your party a 10% movement increase during the daytime, though note that it doesn't work in certain areas. All of his talents contribute to his damage, but his skill has the highest priority as he'll be spamming that during his on-field time. Then, his ascension materials include the Emperor of Fire and Iron boss drop, the Star Conch Leo specialty, and slime drops. His talent materials use the Prosperity book series from the Lyra talent domain, slime drops, and the Lightless Mass from the Fontaine weekly boss. At C0, Gaming already has cohesive gameplay and is surprisingly strong for a 4-star. But let's see what his constellations add. C1 makes Mantai heal 15% of Gaming's HP whenever they meet back up, which gives him even more self-sustained potential, turning his HP manipulation into a net positive gain. This especially helps him stay above 50% HP for Mantai to be consistently resummoned during his burst state and to receive the damage bonus from his A4 passive. C2 gives Gaming a 20% attack buff for 5 seconds if he gets over overhealed, regardless of the source. It's a small but welcome damage boost as long as you can ensure he can be consistently overhealed. C3 increases his skill level by 3, which is his main damage source. C4 restores 2 energy to Gaming whenever his skill plunge hits an opponent, which is a significant help to his ER needs and allows you to run more offensive stats on him. C5 increases his burst level by 3, and C6 gives Gaming's skill plunge a 20% crit rate and 40% crit damage bonus, plus a wider AoE, which is a very significant damage damage boost that also helps a lot with balancing his crit stats. Now that we're familiar with Gaming's kit, let's move on to his build starting with artifacts. For his sands, it's either EM or attack. EM is generally better in his vaporize slash melt teams, but it can still depend on the external EM or attack buffs he's getting, such as having sucrose on the team or using an EM weapon. Of course, if on a mono pyro team with no reactions, then it should strictly be attack. His goblet will generally want pyro damage, but attack can still be good, especially if you have a lot of damage percent bonuses already, like with Farina. Then the circlet will want crit rate or crit damage, whichever gives him a good crit ratio. For subsets, get enough energy recharge to burst every rotation, then you're looking for crit, EM, and attack. An alternative build is going full elemental mastery on all main stats as a burgeon DPS, and he's just looking for ER and EM on his substats. Regarding his energy, Gaming's ER targets can be a bit high. These targets can be lowered by having more Favonius users on the team.
Then when he gets to c4, they become significantly more manageable. Either way, be sure to hit these as he wants to burst every rotation. Now for his artifact sets. For an easier and flexible build, you can go for two-piece combos of Crimson Witch for pyro damage, attack, or EM sets. Choose the pieces that give the right main stats and good substats. Then for full sets, the four-piece Marichose Hunter and Crimson Witch of Flames are his top options. He can naturally consume and heal his own HP, so he easily triggers Marichose's four-piece effect by himself. Though just be careful of overcapping with crit rate if used with a crit rate weapon or if you have his C6. Since he also repeatedly uses his skill, he can stack the Crimson Witch's four-piece effect. Another good four-piece alternative is the four-piece Guild of Dreams for its EM and attack bonuses for a reaction team. The four-piece Vermilion can also work since he wants to use his burst at the start of his combos and he can decrease his own HP to stack more attack. But if relying only on his own HP consumption, it can stack a bit slowly since you have to wait for his skill plunging attacks. For a Burgeon build, it's the usual EM focused sets. Four piece Flowers of Paradise Lost and Gilded Dreams offer high potential, but two piece EM set combos with really good substats can provide close to similar performance. Moving on to his weapon options, he's got a lot of great free to 5 star options. Starting with the completely free to play weapons, the Tidal Shadow is the best craftable option, although that requires billets, so the Mailed Flower and Melazine Claymores with max refinements can be preferable alternatives, but they're limited time rewards only. The Black Lift Slasher is an option, although it's not as effective in boss fights and not worth the star glitter in my opinion. There's also the Blood Tainted Greatsword as a cheap 3 star option for a Burgeon playstyle. Next are Gacha or purchasable 4 star options. Between the two battle pass claymores, the Serpent Spine is generally the better choice and a competitive option even versus 5 stars. Another competitive but gacha option is the Rain Slasher, specifically in his Vaporize playstyle. The Lithic Blade is also a very good stat stick if used specifically in a Leo focused team. Then for 5 star weapons, it generally falls under being an attack or crit stat stick. Some weapons also don't have synergistic passives unfortunately since they have specific requirements to activate. As a general tip, just remember to balance his stats and multipliers. For example, if if Gaming is already receiving huge attack buffs like from Bennett or base damage buffs like from Xian Yun, Gaming will prefer weapons with EM, damage bonuses, or crit rather than attack percent, and vice versa. Finally, let's go over his possible team templates and synergies. A vaporized reaction playstyle will be a staple template since it's easy to execute and outputs very good damage. You're mainly consistently setting up a hydro aura on the enemy, so Gaming's plunges can always, or almost always, trigger a vaporized reaction. The usual off field hydro applicators are Singcho, Yelan, and Farina. It can just be one, which is still sufficient application for consistent vaporizes, or a double combination of them for better combined hydro app and damage. Then the other Flex slot will generally be composed of buffers like Bennett or VV equipped Animo units, the usual supports you see in vaporized teams. But again, be mindful about having sufficient healing as well. And for any of his teams, since he wants to stay at high health for Mansai to be continuously resummoned, his healing becomes a net positive at C1 though, so that's one case where he can self sustain. But of course, there can still be other factors involved, like Farina draining his HP and taking a lot of damage from enemies. You'll likely end up comping him with supports that consolidate buffing and healing anyway, like. Like Bennett or our new animo support Xian Yun. She's a healer and plunge attack focus buffer, so she'll naturally have very good synergy with Gaming. While she's not required for Gaming, she's still a big boost for him and now allows him to also plunge outside of his skill. However, even if Gaming plunges with his Claymore attacks, it's still going to be physical damage. But if you have a C6 Bennett who, aside from boosting pyro damage, will then infuse Gaming's Claymore attacks with pyro, he can now alternate his skill in Claymore plunges, potentially triggering Vaporize on most, if not all of them for a lot more damage. A variation of a vaporized template is the overvape or overload vaporized team, which introduces an electro unit like Fischl or Yae to deal damage and apply electro off field. Triggering electro charge on an enemy allows the hydro and electro auras to temporarily coexist, and if Gaming applies pyro on them, he will proc both vaporize and overload. If you're interested in a melt playstyle for him, this needs reliable, consistent cryo application since the cryo aura is consumed faster by applying a pyro aura. But the trade off is that melting with pyro has a higher reaction multiplier than vaporizing. Having an animo infuse their ability with cryo can also help for added cryo application. You'll want to be conscious of timing Gaming's plunges to ensure that they're triggering melt every time. Otherwise, if the pyro aura overtakes the enemy, then your cryo units might be the ones triggering melt instead. On the other hand, mono pyro teams require no reaction management for much easier gameplay. Bennett's a typical teammate for his huge attack buff, and even better if he has C6 to buff pyro damage and infuse Gaming's attack 
attacks. And having three sources of pyro particles will help bring down your pyro unit's ER needs. An Animo unit is also highly recommended to VV shred the enemy's pyro resistance, or other synergistic supports can work like Zhongli for his shield that can also reduce elemental resistance as well. A niche variation of this is having a double Animo, double Geo, or an Animo Geo combo for the two flex slots. If you have Chevrous, you can also play Gaming in one of her pyro electro only teams, where she'll boost his raw pyro damage via her resistance shred and attack buff. When using Gaming for a Burgeon team, you'll need to have good combined hydro and dendro application to consistently generate dendro cores. His own HP consumption might also make him feel more vulnerable combined with Burgeon's self damage, so having a capable healer is valuable as well. Enemies have a limit of how many times they can take Burgeon damage at once, though. So you might end up generating too many cores at once and some of those burgeon explosions might just end up getting wasted. If you find yourself generating too many dendro cores, you can instead add an electro unit who can also be a hyperbloom trigger like Kuki or Yai. This turns the team into a combination of burgeons and hyperblooms, which can further boost its potential for single target and AoE scenarios. These are some templates you can try out, but as always, feel free to experiment and find what works for you. And that's going to be it for this Gaming Guide. Let me know what you think of him, especially if you've tried gaming with Gaming and who you plan on comping him with. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!